Okay, so first of all, one thing just to note is uh, the Halo mod was built to be balanced similarly to vanilla um, because the URF, which is the United Rebel front in Halo, um, in our mod is essentially OSP reskinned with a couple ships um, swapped out and with no plasma. Um, <clears throat> the balance is very similar to vanilla. Um, there is a few key differences, but if you understand the basics of vanilla, you can then start to learn the basics of the Halo mod faster. All right, so now we're going to go switch over to the specifics of the Halo mod, um, where we're going to go into short range weapons and combat, on specifically for them, which is very similar to ANS, then their long range stuff. Um, similar you were scouting pd and then the ship specifically so we'll go through this quickly you guys know this one the main differences here are going to be your ramparts um, they are absolutely fantastic for short range pd um, as well as for wearing down other uh, small vessels like gladiuses or parises and even halberds from the flank um, <clears throat> you just need to kind of wear them down over time very very fast firing and if you buff them on a Paris um, You can essentially have constant uh, rates of fire. So 40 millimeter RPF is going to be fantastic um, for your uh, PD nets um, The other ones are similar to what we discussed for vanilla um, again softening up targets um, uh, Generally speaking though this is going to be medium range and this is going to be a kind of not the UNSC's bread and butter. Um, they're going to want to stay at a distance and shoot max and missiles, but they still want to be able to defend themselves at short range. Um, and so that's where these cannons uh, come into play. So they're good uh, at UNSC versus URF play. Um, cannons, 250s especially, are just fantastic. A 250 marathon is going to shred um, uh, uh, you know any any decent URF fleet um, so daggers size zero missile this is super super short range um, they're gonna be faster than hybrids if you can make them at least faster than hybrids they're very cheap um, low damage however that being said um, I just had a match the other day where uh, two or three gladiuses snuck up close to one of my marathons launched I think close to a hundred daggers at it and within i think three minutes that heavy cruiser marathon was dead um granted that was most of their missiles but still um size zeros can be dangerous and they're also the child you know favored child munitions for cluster missiles um so they're also and they're also great at amms so they're gonna be short fast um i think you can get about one and a half kilometers out of it um Sometimes I think two if you can push it, but generally speaking, you're going to be about one to one and a half kilometers of AMM range um, for a really effective use, and you want to hot launch those as well. Um, and they're cheap, which is great. So um, generally, you're not going to kill um, a size two or three with one of them, but at least if you get two, uh, two or three on them, they're they're great. Um, URF. So generally speaking, you. Sorry, what was that? Uh, do you do you know if anyone managed to get any games with uh, the uh, with the uh, with the KKMs uh, in size zeros? KKMs, connect uh, It was a thing on the test branch. Yeah, it was a test branch thing, and they were really silly. Uh, size twos could one shot ships. Um, uh, no, we didn't get any games in um, with the KKMs. Yeah, like, I don't think anyone. No one mixed the tester branch with Halo. Yeah. <clears throat> um, a good question, though. Um, okay, so URF is so generally speaking, um, the basic doctrine is going to be URF can get really, really close, um, and they can do massive rocket salvos, containers, missiles, just like they do in vanilla, um, and close range cannon fire. UNSC vessels are not great at close range. Um, your marathons are, and, and halcyons are going to be the best ones for. Uh, close range combat um, but you essentially you want to make sure you stay as far away from the enemy as possible and engage at your maximum uh, engagement distance um, because you're just not going to survive under under sustained fire uh, questions about these specifics that we ran over great now long range, this is where the UNSC shines and that's where we've built a lot of this in here one thing we don't have in here that I will uh, include as a size four because we built this 
uh, and built this uh, tutorial out before the Thanos was launched. So I added in stuff last minute, but we missed the S4. So uh, cluster missiles. So size four, three, two, and one, and zeros. Um, it's just absolutely crazy possibilities with cluster nesting dolls. Um, as well as uh, we can, in a recent uh, last update, um, or it was before the Thanatos update, we added in a bug fix that allowed you to put in flares, chaff, and active decoys alongside other missiles. So if you want to confuse AMMs, uh, you can throw in one or two chaffs with your missile uh, cluster missiles. And on deployment, then AMMs will get confused and go for that fantastic use uh, of the cluster missiles. Um, and you can stage them to be super long distance. Um, and over time with volleys, I'm sure you've seen plenty of the videos that Jack and I and everyone else has put out, um, you know, loading them up with 20, 30 daggers. Or in the case of the S4, you can get, I think, up to 80 daggers. Um, let's check that real quick. S4 clusters. Let's go and see. Piercers. 90 you can fit 90 um, of these size zeros at a max range and still have 21,000 range um, so yeah <clears throat> you can load these up as much as you want um, so yeah that's that's the, the bread and butter for their missiles um, you can also use traditional ones as well and just stay at a distance or if someone's getting too close you know use your torpedoes or other missiles to chase the urf off um, max is really the the shining light of the mod um, as it is with UNSC combat uh, just clarif clarifying point here they are not lore accurate because um, lore accurate does not fun where one Mac shell goes off and it decimates another ship and it in one shot no one would want to play that we had you know testers and us go through that so don't even ask <laughs> So L Max are similar to 250 AP in terms of damage, um, but a lot more penetration, a lot more distance, and structure damage. That is what Max are built on generally: is long range, um, penetration, speed, and structure damage. So L Max are going to be softening up targets at a distance. You're going to want about 200 for most ships minimum in terms of ammo that you carry, because again, it's not going to be the killing blow for an L Max. It's going to be wearing down the enemy at a distance. Um, and if you have like Elmax on a Gladius or a Paris and you're shooting at, you know, eight to 12,000 meters away, it's going to piss people off and you're not going to be able to see them. You don't know where it's coming from. You can see the trail, so you can start heading in that direction. Um, but you can get some pretty long shots off on if you And if you combine scouting with uh, Max, you can definitely wear down people over time. So Elmax, just clarifying, not for instant killing or high damage, but for damaging over time with large volleys. HMAX, this is going to be where you want to deal uh, lots of damage. So up to 2,500 damage per shot, and they can devastate smaller targets in a single hit, or cripple a larger ship um, if you get a you know, cord through this uh, top to bottom, or not top to bottom, uh, front to back. Um, or if you get two or three shots, you know you can take out engines. Uh, if you get a reactor shot, you can one shot a ship. Um, so this is kind of where you want to do the bulk of your fighting is your HMAX. Um, you can buff them with E-Regs, energy regulators, um, as, your, uh, as a bonus to your uh, decrease in that reload time per shot. But HMAX are going to be the best in terms of taking out medium and large ships. Um, you can one-shot frigates. I've one-shotted uh, Parises, other halberds, if you get the right angle, um, but sometimes you might need two or three to get to get a good shot in. Um, but yeah, ex expectation-wise, large container ships, um, you're going to need quite a few to deal enough structure damage to cripple it, because um, they're big and empty. But smaller ships like uh, shuttles, cargo feeders, tugs, stuff like that, you can generally one or two shot them with an HMAC. Um, Again, similar to other uh, Paris's, Halberds, stuff like that. Bigger vessels um, are going to take, you know, I'd say 5 to 10 uh, to fully kill. Um, sniping is going to be the best thing, like I mentioned earlier. Don't get up close and duel with them. That's where two of the LMAX are great, is if someone does get in too close, you can start shooting LMAX repeatedly at them while pulling back. Um, that's one of the best strategies for the LMAX, is wearing them down where they can't see you, or if they get too close smack them really close, smack them a ton while you pull back. Um, 
LMAC and HMAC in terms of Halbert and Paris and uh, the ships that kind of sit back is going to wear down and demolish any ship, you know, over time. Um, that's the best thing you can do is shoot a long distance and hide. So this is where that scouting again comes into play. You want to put your scouts up first, have them target lock an enemy ship, have your max hit them before they can see where you're at. And the super heavy Mac or the schmack, which is the funnest thing to say. <laughs> um, this is going to destroy large targets. Only used on the Thanatos um, with a Thanatos specific Mac mount. Really long time to reload and it's very expensive. Um, but it does, uh, I think, uh, 5,000 per shot. Let's double check this. Essentially, you can take out any ship ever besides massive modded ships with one volley. Um, and let's go and see what the specifics are on that for why. So let's go Thanatos Mac and let's load up a magazine. All right, so we got 10,000 centimeter armor penetration. Here you go, 6,000 HP for component damage, 5,000 for structure damage. So if all three hit, you're going to instantly bloom 90% of ships out there. Um, because it's going to damage uh, and just smack the structure and break it. So again, the reload time is immense on these. Um, you're going to sit there. I think baseline is going to be, um, let's go look at the reload time. It's somewhere around, I think 10 minutes unbuffed, but you can get it down to three minutes buffing it. Um, yeah, 600 seconds, yep. So um, about 10 minutes unbuffed down to three minutes buffed um, so fantastic we just used it in a match the other day um, there was a couple of halcyons pushing my position and uh, aqua was there with his thanatos as support i locked it for him and then boom instantly shot it instant bloom um, so it, it is a game changer but it's very expensive very power hungry and very low uh, very slow to reload um, it is the lore accurate mac <laughs> pretty much yes that is the lore accurate mac very very similar yeah um and then long range traditional missiles um getting you past that you know six thousand range i think is generally it but max and clusters and s4s you can go out to twenty thousand meters with as long as you can see the enemy on the map there's no limit essentially as long as you have a firing lane um for max and s4s there's essentially no limit to them um in terms of specific s4s as well um these ones let's go back to the missile designer let's go regular s4 so these guys what i like to do is load it up with he impact because they are very slow to start but then they can get really fast um so typically what i'll do is i'll load them somewhere in this range between speed and maneuverability and get, you know, 19,000 meters at 500 meters, 524 meters per second. Um, and that's, you know, when they get up to speed because the acceleration is really slow. Um, they're not great for short range because they're not maneuverable. And that's by design because they'd be too OP if they were super maneuverable but at short range. So the best case scenario for most of these, unless you crank it into maneuverability, is going to be 5,000 to 6,000 meters minimum. And then the farther out you get, generally speaking, the more accurate you get. Um, and these are going to be great for, I'd say, destroyers and up, something that's slow. Halberd is hard to hit because it's super small. Um, but these are great for killing cruisers, battleships, heavy cruisers, and like a Thanatos. Um, you can even like three or four shot with something like this. You can three or four shot a container a liner um, and build it out to be like, I think, 40. Let's just go for fun. Let's see what we got here. Let's go... Uh, How do we do cluster decoy launcher if you want to do? Yeah, thirty points. I'm gonna go something cheaper though. Let's go. What I did before is hardened skin, and then hardened let's skin is just go. not worth it. There, it doesn't. I don't think it hits any breakpoints. Yeah. No, this thing. Not only that, you already powerful. have three hundred. Yeah. yeah if it's so percentage much. base, it would be worth more. But even yeah. if you go EO, yeah, you're at 40 points. So essentially, 120 points of missile can take down, you know, a up to like 6,000 point container liner yeah. if they have all their missiles loaded up. So um, um, size fours are great thinking, for long range. You're going to need to... Uh, like, go um, for it. Honestly, triple seeker. Triple seeker. I would go for triple seeker. Uh, 
I would go probably EACT, uh, anti radiation on all on all radiation or Homon Jam works fine. Uh, and then you do EO Val. It would mm. be quite funny. Oh, I bet. <clears throat> yeah, the, the 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 absolute. Oh yeah, absolutely. Playing around these is super fun. But yeah, my point is, with essentially forty points, you can uh, cripple. Like one or two of these can cripple even a heavy cruiser for a couple of minutes while they have to re you know repair, and three or four will absolutely devastate most vessels uh, in the mod. So, um, besides the uh, Thanatos, uh, I do believe there's a slight problem with that missile. It has enough maneuverability that it should be able to infinitely corkscrew a defender, which uh, is generally uh, considered unhealthy for the game. Yeah, because it has such a high health pool, the only uh, point defense that can actually take one of those out is the defender. And if the defender can't hit it, then the missile always penetrates point defense. Which means it needs to be soft killable, which is, uh, which means uh, it, you, it shouldn't be able to have... Basically, you run into the uh, container problem, where if containers are too strong, where they can just always pen point defense, they have to be soft killable. Although, because a container hitting will in almost instantly cripple most ships. And that's why these uh, ones are not as maneuverable because there's even still today, um, but even no, with a lot it, of our testing, you can miss most shifts. And it'll try to turn around and get it, but there's a lot, there's not a large, but I'd say one in five or six of these S4s will miss their target. Um, and so using, oh, also, so layering uh, in the Sarissas, no. jamming, and lasers, uh, auroras and grazers and stuff like that is going to be key to defeating it or a combined fleet. But yeah, they're, they're meant to be, you know, essentially. Not very maneuverable, but powerful. So if you're a solo yeah, ship also, and you only have defenders, yeah, you're gonna get screwed. But that's not, you I, know, that's not good point defense. True. Like, and I did notice that they get exponentially more expensive if you try and add more maneuverability to them, which is very good. That's mm -hmm. a very good balancing lever right there. Yes, absolutely. Opinion? Thank you. It's just there's also the issue of the Sarissa, is that if <laughs> someone decides to corkscrew their missile. Uh, just using waypoints, then you can't even. That's not a viable point defense strategy. Yeah. Bro, exactly. Yeah, you, you need. Turn this into Valcon Spyro, please. <laughs> yeah, you, you need you need a layered <laughs> strategy. Yeah, if you're only using one layer of that point defense strategy, you're gonna lose. Um, but as for S fours, they're meant to be again sh not short range. You're gonna miss v your chance to miss under six thousand meters is pretty high. Um, beyond that, it's it's really it's really good at hitting targets. Um, again, unless it's a fast moving small target, I've missed several of those uh, S4s before. So um, we already mentioned this before, really, with the max. Um, the difference for the scouting part is going. You want to try to flank uh, UNSC vessels because they're really good at bow tanking. That being said, your Mac cannon is going to be the first thing to go when bow tanking. Um, so save some restores for that because you'll likely. Um, if you stay in combat and get hit, it'll probably be one of the first things to go. So make sure you have enough restorers and DC teams for that. Um, but from the side, um, the armor is very flat. You'll notice it's not like vanilla vessels where they have a lot of angled stuff. Uh, UNSC vessels are just very, you know, flat. That's how they're built in lore, um, which ended up being a great strategy for defeating them and making them not too OP, um, is that you can flank them and even, you know, you get four or five smaller ships with like shuttles or cargo tugs with a hundred millimeter uh, or even, you know, other Paris's with like a 120 on it. You can shred a marathon or a halcyon from the side with sustained fire in a couple minutes. Um, yeah. Just cause it's uh, so flat. The only issue I what I ever, ever had killing halcyons is some volume tanking and that's about it. Yes. Which is part of there the, uh, <clears throat> um, we, we built that specifically kind of as an homage to the pillar of autumn class where it's supposed yeah. to be able to volume tank. Um, but even then, yep. uh, what you can do is uh, the rear of the ship with the engines and the very front of the ship um, are actually kind of its weakest parts. Um, so there, if you can hit, if you can rear shot a Halcyon, that's kind of one of the best ways to, to take it down. Um, yeah, that's Gladii. Kind of like really dense from the back, so. Yes, Gladii, I have a specific spinal mounted jammer. Um, which is great for a short range. You can kind of hide next to an asteroid, um, you know, barely poke out and then jam, um, which is really good to do. It's spinal mounted, so it's really what you have to do. Um, 
And yeah, similar to variant ANS, it's using most of their stuff. Um, we wanted to make sure the mod was as easy to pick up as possible. So everything is very similar to vanilla or exactly from vanilla or vanilla adjacent. Um, we wanted it to be very easy to pick up and play with. So get your scout ships forward, keep them hidden, and spot targets for your max and long range missile carriers is the general idea. Um, questions on those? I do have a comment. This, I have mm -hmm. found this mod to be very well balanced in my own playing with it. So there is that. I awesome. usually Thank you. I do typically despise modern balance, and I can't say I despise Halo mods balance. So <laughs> thank you. Thank Jerama for that. He's one of our testers, so he does some great work with that. Um, okay, let's go to, and this will be the last slide. So, um, UNSC specific ships. So the Gladius, very mm -hmm. small. Um, again, we the sizing. Please reference the. Uh, frequently asked questions section of discord but we wanted them to fit in most maps and be similar to other mods and vanilla so that's why we scaled them down 20 percent otherwise the thanatos wouldn't even fit inside most maps <laughs> you would you would fly in the map and then already be already be retreating um so gladius is a fast small scout ship and a capper um dagger delivery is where it becomes a little more um uh angry spicy compared to a sprinter corvette um where you can deliver some pretty pretty devastating uh, short-range combat, um, but it also dies really, really, really fast. So um, it's a glass cannon, but if you get close enough to other vessels, um, those S0s in groups can just be insane. Um, as well as it's really good at having uh, LMAX, um, where you can support uh, a fight from a distance with a light Mac uh, shot. Um, it's also great for a PD escort if you fill it up full of ramparts and 40mm uh, RPF. You're going to be able to put it on the edge of your fleet and you know help cut down at least half of the missiles before other PD gets to it. Um, so really, really versatile ship. Um, overall, before I get into the specifics of that, UNSC ships are not meant to be multi-class, generally speaking. You need to pick one thing that it does and then build it to do that one thing. That being said, each of these can be a can field and do a variety of things really good they just can't do a lot of things good at the same time so you're not going to be able to have a jack of all trades ship generally speaking obviously minus the thanatos but even then um, point wise you're pretty restricted in most um, 3k 6k or 8k in terms of we do a lot of 8k here um, you're pretty restricted with by design in picking your ship to do one maybe two things really good and then building it out like that um, that's the point of all these ships so we do get a lot of questions about that they're not meant to be multi-role if you want to be multi-role you can but you have to go well above most normal point limits um, to do that um, so that's out of the way we have the Gladius as, as your sca uh, scout capper. Not really great at, um, you know, long range EOR like a sprinter does, but using your spinal jammer, um, you can get up close and hide and do some decent support there. Um, but the Paris is going to be a better um, EOR uh, platform if you pick out to be, if you make out to be a specific EOR system there. Um, but it can literally do anything. The Paris is very, very modular. It can be. Any one of these Mac delivery, PD, escort, you know, small ship killer, missile deployer, um, literally anything, but you have to pick one job for it to do. It can't do three, four jobs at once. Parish, you have to pick one thing to do, and then it'll do that its job really, really well. Um, so that's the focus there. Halberd, uh, generally, it's going to be your Mac sniper and heavy scout. Um, and you can kind of do a little bit of cannon and missile brawling with getting throwing some 120s on it, um, you know, for short or for small, maybe scout killing. Um, but generally speaking, most people use it for max sniping and for heavy scouts. Um, and heavy scout meaning you throw a cannon on there and maybe a couple size ones alongside a, uh, a bullseye and, you know, something like a or maybe a panard or maybe and then throw in a, a parallax or a, something like that in there. Um, but again, you got to pick one thing to do and then support it. So Halberd, uh, we got the Wolfpack 3K in the starter fleets. If you uh, duplicate that, um, you can make some really good, um, really good uh, long range fire with that. You're not going to, um, 
You'll need someone else to support you if you have a if you have a wolf pack though. Someone will have to be on the front lines capping points or engaging the enemy. Um, wolf packs are great as a support system, but not as a solo solo play. Uh, Halcyons are going to be uh, your fast cruisers. Like I said, they're great at volume tanking. That's part of the the design. They have a little bit higher of um, uh, DR bonus up to 30%. Um, they're going to be good at cannon brawling, not as good as a marathon, but still pretty decent. Um, excellent light mac support. They do have a bonus where you have a triple shot light mac, and that is again an homage to the uh, Pillar of Autumn where it had that triple shot on the light mac. Um, so you can really bust out a ton of uh, light mac shots, especially if you throw some uh, energy regulators on there. And over time, you can, you know, I would, I would probably throw six to eight hundred light mac ammo in a Halcyon for a match because you're going to burn through that with the triple shot and and e regs, um, and those can really wear down stuff over time in that triple shot volume. Um, it's also a really, really good missile cruiser. You can load up. Let's go back here. You can load up the Halcyon. We have these fun side slots right here that can load up a ton of up to V2s. Um, and they're the custom size V2s. So if you load up these with V2s, and you can even get some V3s up here, uh, and a V4, I think this will fit one or two in there. Yeah, four, there we go. Um, this thing can be a fantastic long range missile support cruiser as well. Stick in the back and just lob missiles to the front. Um, really great at that. Most, oh, you'll see this here. The Marathon and the Halcyon both have some chin mounted options here, which is great if you're going to be a max centric play. You can then have your own bullseye um, and build the Halcyon or the Marathon to be your intelligence center for your fleet um, to support, you know, if they do get within that 8K range of your parallax or if you go with a, a spyglass, I think it's like 11, whatever, you can lock at longer distance um, from the ship that's firing and not have to rely on a scout if it gets killed. Um, so that's kind of the play there with those two. Marathon, 250 Marathon, I'll say this all till the cows come home. It's great for anti-URF operations. Um, you can just shred uh, with two or th you know two to three marathons in a fleet with 250s and max. Um, you can take on uh, most URF fleets that way. It's it's my it's my favorite one to go with. Um, Thanatos is going to be your schmack launcher and heavy brawler. So for most games, like we went back to the Thanatos here, you are not going to be able to do. Um, a schmack and a lot of anything else. There's a couple fleets people have posted in 6k um, where they've done schmack with a couple I think cannons and mixed stuff like that but it's meant to be expensive for a reason because it is very powerful um, so you also need to specialize if you're going to stick within those 6 to 8k point ranges um, for your Thanatos. If you go above that it can do everything fantastically and demolish anything in its path but when you're sticking to 6k and 8k um, you need to kind of specialize and either choose to have the schmack or choose to have cannons and missiles. Um, that's kind of your your play there for the Thanatos. Um, so that is the general, I say, this is gonna be funny. That's the general specifics for the UNSC um, in terms of going through them and their basic strategies. Again, UNSC, sit back, snipe with your max, use your long range clusters, S4s um, and whatnot to help uh, wear down the enemy. Um, and then if you need to, uh, get in closer with a Paris or a Gladius fleet and start shredding some of those light ships. Um, but that is the basics of Neb and basics of Halo. Thank you guys for the clarifications. Again, um, not a super expert myself. That's why I had an expert come and help me with this. So <laughs> thank you for the clarifying points there. You are now declared officially all to be experts. And uh, I expect you guys to go share your newfound wisdom with the uh, rest of the Nebulous and Legends of Reach community.